Hello there and welcome back. This is video two of Biological Bases of AP Psychology and we're going to be talking all about the nervous system. So we've kind of already talked about and if you didn't catch it make sure you go back in this playlist and find that video about the neuron which is really the basis, the foundation of everything else we're gonna talk about, including the nervous system. So make sure that you've got the notes that are in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. They're linked down below if you didn't get those from your teacher. Um, or if you are a teacher, please feel free to check that out so that you can kind of give these notes to your students. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. These are your learning targets as laid out by College Board, and you'll see that they're pretty broad because we've got to know all about the nervous system, but then those subdivisions underneath that, including central and peripheral nervous systems, and then each of those break down quite a bit. So we're going to get into that nitty gritty. I've got a graphic organizer for you, and I think you'll find that it just goes really, really nicely with this with these slides. All right, so the nervous system consists of all the nerve cells, all the nerves in your entire body. It's the body's really fast electrochemical communication system, meaning it's both electric and chemical. And we're gonna, really we talked about that in the last video because in a neuron, it's the electrical impulse going down the axon, right? That long part of the neuron. If you think I totally look goofy right now, it's because you didn't watch the last video, make sure you catch that. But then it's also chemical because at the axon terminal buds, they release neurotransmitters. Those aren't electric, those are chemical. So it's that electrochemical communication system. And within our big, huge, whole body nervous system, we have two parts, two subdivisions. Central nervous system, which consists of the spine and the brain. So on these slides here, you see the brain and the spine. Those are the only two things in the central nervous system. And a good way to remember that is that it's in the center of your body, right? Like it starts at the top and your spine goes down the center. But then we also have what's called the peripheral nervous system. And I want you to think of your peripheral vision, right? Peripheral vision, when you're focused on something, it's off to the sides here, right? Well, that's kind of like what the peripheral nervous system is. It's not the center, it's not your brain and spine, it's everything else on the sides. So it's the sensory and motor neurons that connect the CNS, the central nervous system, the brain and the spine, to the rest of the body and vice versa. It's so that your hand can be connected to your spine and your brain and everything in between, right? Okay, so let's get into these subdivisions of the nervous system with central. Obviously, the brain and spine, right? The brain is the neural center of the body. It's the body's control center. This is just review, so we don't have to spend a ton of time there. But then the spine is that super highway of nerves, the body's means of transmitting messages to and from the brain. So that your brain that is thinking, I want your hand to be writing something right now, can communicate to your arm. Because there's no direct communication between the brain and your hand. It has to go through the spine. Likewise, when you pick up the wrong end of your curling iron, your hand doesn't just jump the messages straight to your brain. It goes through the sensory neurons to the spine and up to the brain. Okay, so now that's it pretty much for the central nervous system. Now let's talk about that peripheral, right? The sides. We have two subdivisions underneath this. The autonomic nervous system is where we'll start. The autonomic, I want you to think of automatic, okay? Automatic is not something you would write, for instance, in an FRQ, because that's not really psychological terminology. You would say something like involuntary, okay? The autonomic nervous system controls involuntary functions or items that happen automatically within our bodies. And that it's not that you don't have to think about it because you don't have to think about walking, but that's a voluntary movement. It's that you can't stop your body from doing these things. If you do, you die. And that's why you can't. And that's a good thing, right? You can't stop your body from breathing. Sure, you can hold your breath till you pass out, but then your body's going to start breathing again because you, the conscious you isn't there because the conscious you can sometimes hurt yourself, right? And then your heartbeat, you can't make that stop. And digestion, don't want to make that stop. That would not be good for your belly. 
Then we have somatic nervous system. This controls voluntary movements. And remember, soma means body. And we talked about this back in uh, the last video with the neuron, that the soma of a neuron is the cell body. Well, here it is again, this word soma. And then in our brain video, which is coming up in two videos, we talk about soma and how that help, that understanding helps you even more. So remember, it's all about your body, right? And think of your body like your muscles and those voluntary movements, things that you can do with your body. So it controls voluntary movements and communication to and from the sensory organs. You control these items. They don't just happen, right? Now, walking, for instance, does it just happen? Well, I guess you could say that. You don't have to think about walking, but you had to at one time. You had to learn how to walk. You had to learn how to brush your teeth. You might not think about it now, but it's definitely a voluntary movement to have those very circular, nice motions. Not too hard, not too gentle, right? <laughs> All right. Now what we're going to do, you'll see I popped up this arrow in the bottom here. We're going to dive into the autonomic nervous system because really now we're kind of just done with somatic. Somatic is all your voluntary movements. Done. That's, that's pretty self-explanatory. But then under autonomic, there's another division. And if you're following along on your graphic organizer, that should be really clear for you. So under the autonomic nervous system, we've got two subdivisions, sympathetic, and then we'll talk about parasympathetic. Sympathetic. I don't want you to think of like having sympathy for people. Although if that helps you to understand this, great, but that's not what it is. And I don't want you writing that, for instance, in an FRQ. The sym sympathetic nervous system controls the physical arousal of your body, not sexual arousal, just arousal in order to fight or flight, right? The arousal that's necessary to go about stressful situations. So it prepares your body to act or react in stressful situations, expending energy and initiating your fight or flight. The parasympathetic nervous system then is kind of like the counterpart to the sympathetic. It's what brings our bodies back to homeostasis. It calms the body, conserving its energy, helping keep a constant internal state. Again, returning us to homeostasis, and it initiates what you could call rest and digest. And we'll talk about why we say digest there, because that one can be kind of confusing. So back over the sympathetic, and we're going to go over this some more. I put a heart and a pair of lungs here for you so that you know that the sympathetic nervous system, it's very physical. It increases your heartbeat and your breathing so that you oxygenate your blood so that you can either fight back this dude that's mugging you or run to get the heck out of there right? You've got to have oxygenated blood in order to do those things. That's how it helps you in that fight or flight. But then rest and digest. I've got a nose because it helps you to take a deep breath and to calm down. And then I've got a stomach there. <laughs> it's kind of awkward, um, but it helps you to digest again. Because here's the thing. When you are in a situation where you are in fight or flight, you need to get the heck out of there because it's really dangerous. You need to, your body spends a ton of energy on digestion. It really does. You don't think about it, but it does. And so what your body does naturally, thank you body, when you don't need that energy to be spent on digesting, you need it to be spent on kicking somebody's butt because you're defending yourself or fighting to get the heck out of, or like fleeing to get out of a dangerous situation. It takes that energy that would be used on digestion and uses it to save your life. It's pretty good, right? Well, then once everything's safe and happy-go-lucky, you've got to be able to digest again, right? Like that's kind of important. So parasympathetic kicks in and helps you digest again. All right. So this graphic here gives you all kinds of very specifics on what the sympathetic nervous system does. So it inhibits digestion with that stomach there. It's what we kind of just talked about, right? And it does this all through the brain, talking through the spine to the rest of your body essentially um, and through all kinds of things but yeah okay it stimulates stimulates glucose release by the liver because glucose is your body's form of energy so if it's being released your body body is able to use that energy 
It stimulates release of epinephrine and norepinephrine by the adrenal glands. Now, here's the thing with that one, and I want you to, let's spend a second here. I want you to kind of like star this a little bit. Because a, the adrenal gland and epinephrine and norepinephrine are actually part of the endocrine system, which is our next set of notes. That is related to but separate from the nervous system. So yes, the nervous system stimulates that, but it's actually the endocrine system that makes the adrenal glands release adrenaline. Okay, um, it dilates your pupils, right? Allowing more light to get in so you can see better. It increases breathing and heart rate to oxygenate your blood so you can run really fast, right? Okay, so let's say that um, you were, I don't know, coming home from a play that you saw downtown or something and it's late and a guy approaches you and wants to take your purse. I don't know, something like that. That is now over, right? Like he runs off, the cops are there, you're safe. You go home, you're trying to like slow down and recognize you're okay. Your parasympathetic then kicks in. It stimulates digestion again because you need to be able to do that at homeostasis. It contracts your pupils back to normal and slows your breathing and heart rate. Because here's the thing, and I want you to keep this in mind when we get into the unit that is all about stress later down. I want to say it's like unit six or seven or something like that. If your body stays in the sympathetic, physically aroused state all the time, you are going to die quickly, right? Like over time, this is what stress does to the body. The sympathetic nervous system feels the fight or flight because of whatever stress you're experiencing and it stays elevated and aroused all the time. If you don't have that stress go away and your parasympathetic bring you back to homeostasis, you're going to die of heart failure and people have. So that's what we should be thankful for about our parasympathetic nervous system. All right, the last thing to talk about here are types of neurons. So neurons being the basis of our nervous system, right? Super important. Well, there's different types that we got to know about that are the basis of our nervous system. All right, so we have sensory neurons and our sensory neurons come from our sensory organs, namely our skin. These are called afferent. The way that I want you to remember this is affect. A-F-F-E-C-T. Affect is an emotional state. So like later on, we're going to talk about schizophrenia and one of the symptoms is flat affect, meaning having no emotion or awkward emotion, like laughing at someone's death or no emotion to someone's death that should provoke some emotion. That's affect. It's about emotion. It's about your feelings, right? Well, sensory neurons or afferent neurons are your feelings. They're your senses. They carry incoming messages and information from the sense receptors, namely on your skin, um, but also your eyes, to your spine, to your central nervous system, and eventually to your brain. Right? So it takes it from your hand to your spine up to your brain. Now, interneurons. These are not the opposite of sensory. We're going to talk about the opposite of, sens of sensory in a minute. Interneurons are within, right? They are internal. They are within the central nervous system only, okay? They're only inside the central nervous system. So that means that sensory and motor are peripheral nervous system neurons. Interneurons our central nervous system neurons. And I would rewind and listen to that again and write it down if you didn't catch it. So inner neurons are the only neurons in the central nervous system acting as messengers between sensory and motor. So it actually happens, like let's say you get a paper cut, ouch, right? The sensory neurons take that to your spine. The inner neurons then take over, send it up to your brain. Your brain has a message like, ow, that hurts, right? And it says, okay, you should put on a Band-Aid or don't do that again, right? It sends it through your spine and out to your muscles and your hands or whatever else you're needing to get up and walk to go get a Band-Aid, okay? So inner neurons are the messengers between sensory and motor. Then we have motor neurons. These are efferent. Okay, these carry outgoing information from the central nervous system to the peripheral nervous system and muscles. Okay, now I had a student many years ago who told me the way that she remembers this is that efferent starts with an E. Well, so does engine. 
and engine and motor are related. Okay, so motor neurons are efferent neurons carrying outgoing messages. They allow you to do your bicep curls in the morning. They would allow you to put on your glasses, right, or brush your teeth, whatever that is. Okay, allowing you to move your muscles, the messages from your brain to your muscles. Got it? Okay, the last thing I want to explain here is called a reflex. Okay, now if you notice on the screen here in the middle next to inner neurons, and I kind of color coded the arrows for you, hopefully you caught that. The inner neuron arrow goes from the hand to the spine and back to the hand, meaning it never goes up to the brain. Well, inner neurons do, they do go up to the brain, but, and here's where we can kind of think evolution. Let me, let me give it to you this way. What I would do on your paper is write reflex or reflexes and circle it and then listen to me for a minute and then jot something down that's helpful in you remembering what a reflex is. Okay, um, have you ever like straightened or curled your hair, or ironed a shirt or cooked on a stove and you weren't looking at whatever it is you were going to go grab and you grab the hot part? Like let's say you nick your hand on the iron or on the stove or you grab, oh my gosh, the wrong end of your straightener, your curling iron, oh, ow, right? In that instance of pretty severe pain, you may have noticed, and if you haven't, I definitely have. I, I don't hope that you've had, but you know what I'm saying. Um, you may have noticed that your hand pulled back and then you're like, oh man, that's gonna hurt. And then you feel the pain. So your body recognizes you're about to get third degree burns. You should probably put that down or like get your hand back. So you pull it back. That's the reflex. And then you feel the pain. This is all thanks to your inner neurons and how smart they are. So here's what happened. Let's say you touch your straightener, the iron, right? Your sensory receptors, your skin, your sensory neurons send that message to your spine. The inner neurons in your spine recognize, holy crap, they're about to get third degree burns if they don't pull their hand back now. And so it does a U-turn, just like I have in this arrow. It does a total U-turn in your spine, goes out the motor neurons to get you to move your hand back. And then the message of pain through your sensory neurons gets to your inner neurons and up to your brain crazy, right? But super cool because I just avoided third degree burns, right? All right, guys. So if you didn't catch that, it's kind of complicated. Please rewind and listen to it again. And that's all we've got for this set of notes on the nervous system. The next video being on the endocrine system. So click in that video in the playlist and I will see you there.